What is up guys? Welcome for power rankings for the GOT. We are going to be doing the top 16 teams uh, that came out on top with the uh, the best structure uh, out of the 32 teams. Now, of course, 16 people are being left behind, unfortunately. If you did not make the cut, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe next time, but uh, we're going to be covering the top 16 teams, like I said. And I am not alone today. I am joined by a few people, some of which have been on the channel before. And we have one new face to the channel as well, so let's start it off. We have Dom's Game Room with us. Hey, what's up, guys? You got Dom here. Rob. Hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's up, everyone? I knew I'm I would. New I would only be Maybe. able to keep it professional up until the point that Rob spoke. I, I had a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I I couldn't figure out what I was gonna do. But then, um, I okay. In case you guys no, don't know, I'm the new face on the channel. No, you're not. You've been on my I've channel been. before. What are you talking about? We did a soul link together. <laughs> right that lasted lie, four I've episodes never seen Rob before in my life <laughs> and finally guys we have a uh, like I said a brand new face to the channel our week 10 opponent from the GPC uh, as well as a huge massive help I, I asked specifically that you guys go check them out in the description down below huge help throughout the entire drafting process and with the GOT we have Redithin or Ethan coach of the Tennessee Dynamos how's it going man oh thanks that 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 was really nice uh, Hey, you're welcome, man. Uh, you deserve hi, it. 100%. Hi, hi, everyone. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's start it up. I think people are anxious to know who uh, made it into top 16 and who didn't in the power rankings. So, uh, Ethan, you, why don't you... Uh, yeah, most of... Well, no, half. Uh, Ethan, why don't you start us off? Okay, at 16th, we have Melon Toshington's uh, Exeter Chief Electrovires. Um... I guess really with this with this team, I felt it was really complete, which is why I I, I ranked it pretty high. Um, Do you want to just talk about the members so we know what's uh, what's going on with the team? I'm oh, gonna have oh, pictures oh, yeah, up on course. screen, but just so that people know. Of course. So he's got Starmy, Superior, Mega Pincer, Reggie Steel, Blissey, Lightbird, and Granbull. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, like I said, I think it just uh, I think it just fit pretty well. I think um, I think Reggie Steel is Reggie Steel, Blissey, and Granbull is a really really annoying core. Oh yeah. I think that's gonna be tough to break. Um, and overall, I think it's just going to really wear down the opponent so Mega Pinsir can just come in and destroy stuff. And uh, it's also got your Spinner and Starmie, and uh, I think it's just I think it's just really complete. Now, much. you know, I, I really, I looked over his team a couple of times, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but, like, one thing stuck out at me, uh, and you're, you're going to find it stupid because he does have this. He has Hazard Removal, right? He has Starmie, yeah. but he only has one form of it, and he has the probably the most annoying Mega to switch into on Rocks. Because if it needs to set up, it can't because it's weakened. Uh, and if it needs to get a hit off, uh, if it's slower than the opponent, obviously it doesn't get to do that. It's forced into a quick attack. Uh, and then something can just come in to revenge it. And it can no longer switch out to be saved for the following, for a future, uh, future uh, time in the match. So that was my big concern with his team was that he only had Starmie. I guess it is one of the best spinners in the game. But it's just, it, it looks like it might be a little bit of an issue. But you did mention the Registeel, Blissey, and Grand Bull core. That's definitely something that's really helping out Pinsir. It takes off a lot of pressure and uh, can can allow Starmie to come in at opportune moments in the game because he can just pivot around his walls. So yeah. When I looked at uh, Melon's team, like I, I've known Melon for a while, uh, just playing in the GPC and the tournaments and whatnot, <clears throat> as well as the uh, TTM tournaments that have been coming on. Uh, the one thing that I noticed about his team is that. Like you said, against more, even if it's against a more defensive team and very offensive teams, he's going to kind of be forced to play the same way. And that way is going to be cycling his walls around to take uh, offensive threats on, maybe Thunder Wave them, Toxic them, get hazards up. But it, that's going to happen, I think, in most of his games to the point where, yes, he does have superior and mega pincer too. He might get uh, threats on both the special and physical side to uh, pick off the more defensive mons that his walls can't really take care of. But I feel like it's going to boil down to where he'll be whittling his mons too much, and uh, Starmie's going to have too much pressure later on in the game to get the spin away. And Starmie's not very bulky at all, so if he slips up even once then, and he gets rid of uh, his spinner, then he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, like just looking at uh, the uh, the defensive core of Blissey and Registeel, a fast taunter, and, and that's done. Like he's going to get weakened so quickly because he won't be able to wish pass into Registeel. Not only a taunter, anything yeah. with trick or switcheroo to put a choice item on those, and that pretty much destroys his wall board. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, for sure. But uh, but I still like his team. I think uh, he, it definitely has potential. Uh, we haven't seen any one of his matches yet. Little spoilers, guys. We did get results for two of our top 16 
um, and their uh, their week one or game one results. So uh, it's a little bit uh, skewed, but we'll work with it. Anyway, so moving on to uh, to number fifteen, I have to pull it back up here. Um, in at number fifteen, uh, you want to grab this one, Dom? Yeah, uh, let me go ahead and find it on the sheet. Yeah. Uh, wow, like someone's unprepared. Am I right? <laughs> Very unprepared. <laughs> Oh, yeah, just, just, just really, right, here we go. Here just we go. really quick, right. guys. Before uh, Dom gets started, uh, I do want to mention that these power rankings are purely based on team composition uh, and how the, te the team fits together between its own members. It's not matchup based and it's not player based. So we're not taking, uh, we're not evaluating based, based on, on player if skill. We like you or not? Yeah, it's, it's, know, it's like, so. five anyway. yeah, it's it's purely biased. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dom, go ahead. All right, so Baltimore Orioles, they're going to be uh, coming in with Lander ST, so solid pick. Vaporeon, Mega Manetric, Dublade, Hitmonlee, Deancey, and Rotom. So um, right off the bat, I'm seeing that he's got a pretty nice bolt turn core just with Lander ST and Mega Manetric by themselves. Um, if he scarfs Landers and Mega Manetric and Landers have, have such a nice speed tier, they can pretty much come in on anything. And if not hit it hard with Thunderbolt or Earthquake, they can immediately just switch out into a threat such as Hitmonlee. Like, you always have to watch out for Hitmonlee. It's very underrated, I feel like, because people just think, oh, it's going to be a spinner, have a life orb, or just hit hard. But even just the standard uh, reversal set with the Unburden is, like, a huge game finisher. Like, it's really hard to deal with that when you have all of your mons whittled. Dancy as well, is a really, really solid uh, hazard setter just with Stealth Rocks. And it can even be used uh, semi-offensively because it's special attack set and attack set are not that bad. And Rotom... Uh, I actually love Rotom. It's just an awesome utility mon. Um, again, mm -hmm. he has a, a continuation of the Volt Certain Core. And uh, the Blade, uh, again, that's something that people will probably uh, not prep all the way for uh, because it's very easy to set up a suit with that as well. And Vaporeon, you just cannot go wrong with Vaporeon. That's probably, I'd put it in my top 10 um, walls for the League format, just especially oh, yeah. and, off, especially and uh, defense, like normal attack, normal defense. It, it's absolutely amazing at wish passing, keeping the team healthy. And with a team with Lander is T on it, which uh, benefits from being kept healthy and Mega Manetric as well, it's really, really solid. Yeah, and what's really cool is that the only thing that's really stopping the Volt Turn core is a bulky ground type, and v Vaporeon deals with those so, so well. Just like every single one in the format. So I really see this team working out. Um, my only issue with it was, what was it? Um... I can't even remember now. It looks pretty solid, but... If, if I had to find an issue, I would probably say I think Diancy is kind of the odd man out in this team. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like um, I feel like everything he has, there's really, like, no... There's no good, there's no good like, switch in, no, uh, no way for your opponents to really gain momentum, I feel, because mm -hmm. of all, like, the Volt turn and all that. And while Diancy, uh, I mean, it's it can hit decently hard. I feel it's somewhat passive. Mm -hmm. I feel that's kind of... I feel that kind of uh, is a pretty contrasting to the rest of his team. I feel oh, like yeah, it would have fit my team, team better. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think another big thing is that his um his walls, or his only real wall, I'm going to say, is going to be Vaporeon. So that's yeah. a lot of pressure to be put on Vaporeon, as well as the fact that he doesn't have any Pokemon that like have outright like massive amounts of power. Like Sure, you can ban Landers, but it's in such an odd speed tier, and it's so easy to come in on like an Earthquake with a Flyer. Or, I mean, Hitmon Lee's a wall breaker. Yeah, Hitmon it, it, it's a wall breaker, but it's not a conventional wall breaker. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did say before that we're not basing this on player, but I know specifically I've played with Ben before. He really, really knows how to use Mega Manek trick and the fact that in a uh, a league type setting where you can run it modest gives it a, a huge power boost it's, it becomes extremely mm -hmm. powerful and difficult to deal with difficult to switch into so i can vouch for that i've drafted it before it's actually pretty nice yeah and there's the double intimidate yep absolutely yeah, of course. Definitely. all right so moving on to uh number 14 i think i'm gonna grab this one uh we have uh one of my very good friends uh immortal mens uh with the hog haluchas and a lot of, uh, two of you had him pretty low, and he was kind of saved by the fact that me and Dom had him a little bit by, uh, a little bit higher uh, on the power rankings. That's what put him back in, but um, I'll just go over the team really quickly. Mentz has Thunderous T, Mamoswine, Mean Xiao, Mega Alakazam, Porygon Z, Escavalier, and Kabutops. Now, me and Ethan had talked about this while we were drafting. Uh, Mentz has no switch-ins 
Like, nothing on anybody's team switches into any one of his mons. They're all super strong. It's pure hyper offense. But the problem with Mensa's team is that he also has difficulty switching into attacks. Now, there are some Pokemon that can be run a little bit more bulky, like a Scavalier. Kabutops can be run as a defensive set to check birds. Uh, Mamoswine can be run as a bulky set. But for the most part, a lot of Pokemon are O-Code by things that they are... Um, that they are weak to, that are super effective against them. Uh, especially Mega Alakazam, that's probably the most frail Pokemon on the physical side on Mensa's team. But other than that, I think that uh, if Mens plays it correctly, um, this team is is like very, very difficult to, to, to deal with because you can't come up with a check for everything in a 7-mon draft. And he's covered pretty much every type very, very well. He has electric flying, he has uh, fighting, ground, ice, psychic. Uh, with the psychic, you can count uh, fighting and ghost. Uh, he has normal, ice, electric, uh, steel, bug, rock, water. So it's, it's just he covers a huge array of typings that he can hit so, so hard with, especially with that Porygon Z and the Mega Alakazam. I just see it. I don't want to play against him, basically. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be a nightmare to prep for. You have Porygon Z with with the, spec, with the specs, especially in league format where you can just say, oh, well, uh, this is prevalent in the tier, so I can switch this in. Not really a lot wants to switch in on a try attack with the specs, even without specs. Uh, Scavalier, it's a, it's got probably the, arguably one of the best defensive typings in the game, and it's got a crap ton of attack and defense to go behind that. Um, it can come in on a lot of things and immediately threaten them out. Mamoswine, no, I don't even need to speak about Mamoswine. Mamoswine is one of the most offensively threatening Pokemon in the entire game. Me and Shell with Reckless or Regenerator, both are incredibly annoying. Or Inner Focus. Or Inner Focus. I did run that. <laughs> like a Banded, Reckless, Adamant, High Jump Kick can knock out a Mega Blastoise from full. Thunderous T, you have to sit there and worry about Nasty Plot, Agilipass. Like just prepping for him, is gonna, you're going to be second guessing yourself. Is he going to be Sash Mammoth Swine? Is he going to be Scarf Mammoth Swine? Uh, Agil Agility, uh, Thunderous T. Mega Alakazam having base 150 speed doesn't even have to run max speed. It can be a pseudo special wall or just something that can set up Calm Mind on a special Pokemon, and it'll still outspeed everything else on the team. Like It's just going to be very, very hard to prep for this guy's team. I'm glad that Mensa doesn't have a matchup up against Rob because uh, one thing he's greatly lacking is hazard removal uh, other than Kabutops, oh, but yeah. Kabutops takes a ton uh, from spikes and rocks, which... It's uh, pretty bad uh, yeah, removal. Which Rob has, uh, has no problem setting up with that... Uh, We'll get to Rob's team in a bit. I won't talk about it uh, too much, but uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, I would have liked to see more Volt turn in his team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. He does have the Mean Shao, uh, but uh, that's about it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, they're, they're both fast. Mm hmm. Absolutely, and uh, Mean Shao's U turn is probably one of the best U turns in the game because it's, it's so. Um, not that it's stab, but it's it's so pressuring with it, with its reckless high jump kick that it, it, it almost automatically forces a switch into either a ghost type or something that can actually take a reckless high jump kick, which yeah. there are very few like of. He doesn't really have much to hit. He doesn't really have much to hit ghosts either, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, other than uh, Shadow Ball from Alakazam and... Yeah. Yeah, that's about it, Dark really. Dark Bolt, Sucker Punch, yeah, no, Knock Off. Knock Off from his Cavalier, I, yeah. Uh, I think he can get away with not having much hazard removal besides Kabutops just because... Uh, hazard move hazards or I mean obviously they're always gonna help even on offensive teams, but with him having mostly offensive mons that aren't going to be switching into things anyway, um being whittled by spikes, the only real thing that or spikes are has you cut out there for a second, buddy sorry. His offensive types in because they're too weak. Dom, you, you cut out quite a bit there. You wanna go over that again? I agree, Dom. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, to make a long story short, uh, basically his mods aren't going to be taking many hits anyway. Uh, he's offensive, so not really being whittled isn't really going to bother him that much. The only th time that will really bother him that much is if a game gets dragged on too long and then his mods are just falling to hazard instead of falling to not being able to switch in. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, so that pretty much covers it for Mens. Uh, I think we move on with Rob. If you want to cover our number, uh, tied for our number twelve, actually the first team uh, on the uh, on the bottom side of the list. Oh, sweet. I get to talk about my boy, Jose. Oh, yeah. Represent Josie. Jose represent Latinas. <laughs> Latinas. <laughs> my um, friend. Yeah, we're, we're going to get deported, but before that, we're going to win this tournament. So, <laughs> either me or Jose. <laughs> Let's keep politics out of it. Um, so, you want to so just go over his team? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has the Seattle Seedras, and um, see what he got on his team. He has Mega Gardevoir, Rotom Wash, Crobat, Snorlax, and Polion, Rhydon, 
and Sock. I dig this team. I dig this team. He has, you know, he has his wall breakers, his Mega Gardevoir, and uh, Sock. He has his, he has really fast hazard removal, which is always nice. Really, like the fastest hazard removal, I think, in Crobat and uh, in Polion. Oh, he only has. What? 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 Oh, sorry, Mega Arrow's faster. Sorry, and, didn't uh, and, uh, uh, Ninjask. Yep. All right, so <laughs> I was wrong. Removal. Okay, so. Maybe I shouldn't... No, I'm joking. Okay, uh, let's see. He has Volt Turn, Rotom Wash, and uh, Crobat. So, I like this team. He has... Uh, it's It sucks that he only has Defog, which could be a problem. Because mm -hmm. he, do, um, he does have two Rock Setters, so... Yeah, he has two good Rock Setters, too, and Polion, Rhydon. Polion's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, Ethan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I'll, I'll try not to let personal feelings get in the way. It's got okay. his wallet, you know, Snorlax, Rhydon, etc. Yeah, and I really dig his team. I think he's just, it's going to revolve around Mega Gardevoir, uh, Volt, Volt switching, Volt turning into Mega Gardevoir. But yeah, I dig this team. Now, one thing that not, now one thing that I can see uh, as a little bit of a problem with Jose's team. I really like it too, uh, and I've already used it. The uh, episode is going to be coming out after this for uh, Showdown so uh, Showcase uh, or GOT Showcase. But um, one thing that I've noticed is that he has a very big fighting weakness uh, with yeah. Snorlax mm -hmm. and Polion and Rhydon. Now Rhydon can be considered not really a fighting week because of the Eviolite and its bulk, uh, if it chooses to run that. Uh, and he also has two quad resists. You look at Crobat and Mega Gardevoir, they both quad resist uh, fighting. The problem is uh, Mega Gardevoir can't take a hit on the physical side. Uh, and Crobat uh, gets destroyed by a rock move anyway, so if you have a fighting type with rock coverage, it's pretty much uh, the same problem for him. So uh, it's a good thing that he has Rotom Wash as a physically defensive pivot to deal with that. Uh, but I do see some issues, uh, which is why he came in at number 12. Uh, but I really like Mega Gardevoir. That's that's kind of bias on my part. But I, I, I really, really like Mega Gardevoir because of the GPC after having used it. Uh, I think it's an amazing wall breaker. And if you know how to play it right, it's just, it's so hard to deal with. Yeah, I think it's definitely a solid team. Oh, go ahead, Ethan. Oh, it gets walled by Mega Auto now, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, like, I see like strong fighting types by like uh, Mega Medicham mm -hmm. and uh, Mega Law Punny. Oh, yeah. uh, I see those really, really giving him a hard time. It's a good thing he doesn't have either of those in his group, eh? Hey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the only other thing I see is a real problem for his team is going to be that his fastest mod aside from Grobrat is going to be Mega Gardevoir, and everything under that is pretty slow. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I did notice tears. that. Yeah. Well, if you look at the, you guys never mentioned it, but the Balts, Baltimore Orioles have some wax B tiers, like Mega Manectric, and then it goes way down. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, the next fastest mon is what? Lando T? Uh, Those B tiers are good compared yeah. to that. Lando T? I wrote him, no, yeah, it might, might be Lando. Wrote him is uh, what, 298 or something like no, that. No, 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 it's, it's 298, uh, the... Um... Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's 298, but I don't think even Spooky hits that. I think it hits like 272 or something like that. Anyway. Oh, wow. But yeah, so that's uh, that pretty much covers it for Jose. Very cool team. Very nice Mega Gardevoir. Going to be tough to switch into and uh, some nice hazard removal. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see what the Snorlax can do. I know Jose wanted Gorgeist and he, he didn't end up getting it. He got Sock instead because it got sniped from him. And I think that would have completed his team ex like very nicely. So... It's a little unfortunate there. But moving on to number 12, we have the San Diego Dragonites. Now, all of us, uh, I feel like some of us didn't want to put this team as high as <laughs> we did because uh, the coach wasn't showing up for his picks. But uh, ultimately, I think the San Diego Dragonites uh, ended up with a pretty cool team. Ethan, if you want to yeah. talk about it. Oh, yeah, I dig his team. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure what much what to say about it. I think it's pretty cool. Um <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Great, uh, great, great, uh, great analysis here. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like uh, everything just kind of works together well. Like the. Come on, there's one. Th there's one really big thing here. Come on. I mean, we got the rain. We we rain have to talk about that. Mega rain plus Mega Scizor. Rain plus Mega Scizor is gorgeous. amazing. Yeah. And King. It's, um. He's gonna tear us up with Mega Sizzler, my dude. Yeah. If I was gonna make a team with these Pokemon, that's what I'd name it because like all of those Pokemon work so well. Like as soon as you get rid of Polytoad and King as a threat, you still gotta deal with Mega Scizor. If you wanna attack him, you still have to deal with Floor just being there. Gengar is hard as crap to switch in by itself. Yeah, Mega doesn't have switch ins barring like Blissey with a uh, uh, tinted lens and the specs or even without that you have to deal with speed boost. Like this is gonna be such an offensively I, yeah, dominating cool. team. I think it's a great Dragon Steel Fairy Core for yep. sure. 
Absolutely. I, yeah, that, that's gonna be so tough. Doesn't really have much to take. Doesn't really have much for uh, physical attacks other than Mega Scizor, uh, mm -hmm. which kind of restricts it into that role. I, I see happening sometimes, but. Um, Mega Me yeah. I mean, regular Metacham can hit harder than uh, Mega Metacham. No, no, I mean like switching into physical attacks. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, you gotta consider that Mega Scizor um, is bulkier than Skarmory, and even if it's fully defensive, ST Scizor with Bullet Punch can still just be an easy win con. Yeah, true. Yeah. No, but I, I I saw Mega Scizor plus Rain, and I've used that before on lives. Uh, one of my favorite mm -hmm. Rain teams to use has Mega Scizor on it, uh, rather exactly. than Mega Swamper, and it just works so so well. So I'm really uh, I'm I'm a little bit scared of this team, but uh, like Ethan said, uh, has a hard time switching into physical moves. I can definitely see that being a problem. Um, and yeah, really so, a lot of physically defensive Politoed. Yeah, did we go over the actual members of the team, like all of them? I don't think we mentioned that he had a. Oh, we didn't. I apologize. It's uh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, I mean, it, it was up on screen anyway, but it's Mega Scizor, Florges, uh, Gengar, Politoed, Kingdra, Metacham, and Yen Mega. Unfortunately, uh, spoiler alert, if you want to skip uh, about 10 seconds, he doesn't have a Pelipper, so uh, he can't set up rain twice. All right. Oh my god, spoilers. <laughs> I, spoilers. I, I, I can't believe you just did that. No, no, no don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> why, were you were you spoiled? Yeah, no, you I'm like to be spoiled. Everyone it's because that. Pelipper okay, okay. gets rain dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You got it. <laughs> anyway, moving on to uh, number, what are we at here? Uh, that was tied for number 12 with uh, the Seattle Cedras, and now we move on to another two teams that are tied. Uh, in at number 10, on the bottom end, we have uh, the Manectric United, and I'll just go over the team really quickly. Uh, they have Excadrill, Mega Altaria, Breloom, Rotom Heat, Drapion, Slowking, and Miltang. So, insane team. Uh, Dom, if you want to grab this one. Uh, sure, let's go ahead. Um, Mega Altaria is actually probably better in League format now than it was in on the, the latter, just because it's pretty varied and the sets like prepping for Dragon Dance Altaria and prepping for the Hyper Voice or Cotton Guard or the DD King DDD set are way different than uh, each other because obviously you have one, a huge wall breaking and a, pretty much a wall in itself that can fire off really powerful hyper voices and earthquakes, uh, fire blast, whatever. And then setting up a DD, like it's really hard to switch in on a boosted pixelate basically, uh, pixelate boosted return uh, from a fast one like Alteria. Then you have extra drill, which is probably one of the better spinners, if not the best spinner in the league format in the game period, possibly. Uh, Brelum's hardest crap to deal with because of Spore and even by itself, just offensively, it's pretty nice. Uh, Rotom Heat is always going to be a nice thing to switch full touch around, burn things. Drapion is an awesome pursuit trapper. It can take a a lot of physical hits pretty much any psychic pokemon isn't that big of a threat to it uh slow king is a huge special wall and setting up trick rooms or nasty plots or even calm minds it's just a nightmare to deal with and miltank i love miltank miltank is bulky and fast which is weird it's got a really weird uh, ev sp or stat spread and uh curse tank is always a threat getting up rocks thunder wave heal bill uh milk drink like his team just has really nice synergy and balance i think that's the biggest thing like from the way you described it i think um i think i regret not putting it a little bit higher now because yeah, he, re he really does have pretty much every asset that he needs uh, he does have the makings of a trick room team with slow king if he wants to go that route um he yeah. has it, and one of the biggest things i think and i i was i thought this way before i started drafting my mons was that versatility is key in a seven man draft uh as as much as you can do different things with your pokemon that's where you have an advantage over your opponent and excadrill yep. can be run as a uh a scar variant uh just a straight up uh life orb attacker it can be run specially defensive because of its high hp stat mega altaria is the same thing it can be run as a cotton guard set a uh, special set like you mentioned dd uh Breloom can be run toxic orb or straight up offensive rotom heat same thing it could be run as a defensive pokemon or a fast volt switcher with uh with choice scarf powerful with choice specs drapion is is variable slow king can be run offensive and defensive uh mill tank is the only one that kind of like sticks to its niche a little bit but mm. everything else is just so versatile and i think that he really has a really cool team does anybody remember who this is this is ipro right yeah I pro, uh, yeah, I yeah, so. yeah yeah I think oh, one, guy, one thing yeah. i will note about mill tank is huh? that um, oh go ahead i'm sorry uh, okay, uh, the, the thing I don't like about his team is that it's it's just so naturally slow. Like, yeah. Miltank's the mm -hmm. fastest Mon, and, <laughs> it's, <laughs> and everything else is just in that, like, 80 to 90 range. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he also doesn't have that much of a wall breaker. Um, like, Mega Altaria, I, I have experience with Mega Altaria. I'll keep, I'll keep that aside. Um, but 
But it, would be the only like natural wall breaker. Yeah, but Mega Altaria does not really hit as hard as you think it would. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Not without setting up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 pretty good if you if you're gonna like use it uh, use it to be like versatile and all that. But if you're expecting it to be like a big wall breaker to come in and just destroy stuff, then yeah, you'll have to whittle first. Not. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's not. It's definitely not doing that. So. One thing I like about a Miltank that's underrated is look at his team. He has a very prevalent ice and fire weakness. Miltank eats up any of those hits with yeah. the fat easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was a very good grab for him. Absolutely. Yeah, he completed that very well. Plus, he got a, an additional stealth rocker if he wanted to take that job off of Excadrill. So very nice pick in the last round. So that's that. Now we move on to uh, uh, another tie, I think, right? Uh, yeah, the uh, the other uh, number 10. Uh, another good uh, personal friend of ours, uh do, who gets to do this one? I think it's Rob, right? Rob, you get yeah, Rob, go for it. You get to do another I get to do Johnny. Uh, yeah, you get to do another hey, one of your friends. Johnny. Hey, Johnny. We got Johnny and the Cologne Con Kelders if you want to talk about his members first. A German brother. In, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. His team is the Cologne Con Kelders. Ah, oh, here it is. So he has a Salamence, Lucario, Greninja, Mega Heracross, Mesprit, Mes Magius and regular Ampharos. Yep. So right off the bat, Salamence plus Lucario is really solid synergy. Really good two mods to get together. Salamence just being surprisingly diverse mod. You can run it bulky, offensive, um, kind of like a, even like a wall breaker on either side. Yep. Um, D-Dance, obviously. Lucario, just insanely underrated. Uh, Nazi Plot plus Sword Stance. Gets E-Speed. Uh, he got, he has his speed with Greninja, can even beat a Hazard Stacker if he wants it. Um, some Volt Turn there too. Mega Heracross, so good thing he has some U-Turning into this monster. Um, yeah, switch-ins don't exist for that thing. Nope. Mesprit sets up rocks, really diverse, can ob can be offensive and defensive. Mm -hmm. Like a good, uh, obviously a good mix between Uxie and Azel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It's Magius. <laughs> uh, spin Blocker. Nice because he has Mesprit and Greninja. So he might Trick be planning... Mm -hmm. So he Trick might be planning on... Yeah, yeah. He might be planning on... <laughs> Trick setting up some... <laughs> <laughs> What is his setup, Dom? <laughs> Trick Room. I mean, Lucario could be cool in Trick Room since it's got, like, priority and... Yeah, Me I would think Mega Heracross would be the one to, to profit most from Trick Room. Absolutely. Well, obviously. After having faced it in has... Trick Room. <laughs> so I'm assuming he's just going to set up Hazard with um, Mesprit and Greninja. Uh, turn into Heracross. Spin block with Miss Magius. Set up with those first two. They just have great synergy. And then Ampros, you know, another Volt Turner. Why and not? can be like a bulky in either direction, so... Really solid team. I like it. Now you know what's funny is that uh, you mentioned that Mesprit was a good uh, in between between Uxie and Azelf and uh, Johnny. I know I was talking to Johnny while he was drafting. He was debating between Uxie and uh, and Mesprit before he took it. Yeah, he was telling me that too. Yeah, and he really wanted Uxie because of its defenses. And I told him, dude, you do not want a Pokemon that cannot hit hard at all. Not in this type of draft. It's got base mm -hmm. 75 attack, base 75 special attack. Like, I've used it. I've wanted to run Ice Punch on it for quad weeks. They take, like, 40%. It's ridiculous. Johnny loves Uxie, too. Yeah, he does. And I, I like it, too. Uh, I've swept with it twice now in the GPC <laughs> against Trev and Lars. But, um, like, there's just things that it can't do, and it's it's really annoying. And I think that Mesprit fits better on a 7-mon draft. I think he did a good yeah. job with that. Uh, Miss Magius was uh, something... He was actually going to take something else uh, in round 6, uh, and I think I kind of convinced him to get Miss Magius because um, he needed a spin blocker, which went really well with Greninja and Mesprit already. Uh, and the fact that uh, Miss Magius is actually v extremely versatile. You think it's, it's very uh, offensive because it's fast. It's a fast ghost. It hits hard. It gets good coverage. But it does more than that. It gets access to great utility like taunt uh will-o-wisp pain split uh it's really cool i've, I've ran a uh, jose will will know uh he finally rewatched the match that we had in the nba but um i ran a physically defensive uh will-o-wisp and pain split miss magius for uh banded t-tar I caught it on the switch with Will-O-Wisp. I took a pursuit, uh, and then I went for a pain split, and I went for heal bell. I went down, but I healed up my slow bro in the process, and his T-Tar was burned. So, 
It was, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with that. And his team in general, like we, we mentioned Mega Heracross. Uh, what I really like is that Mega Heracross and Lucario don't share the same weaknesses, actually. No. Uh, except mm -hmm. for Fire. That's the only one they share in common. And he does have a Salamence. Uh, he does have a Greninja. You don't really want to switch that into Fire moves, but... Um, in general, he Ampros is decently uh, bulky that, on the special side as well. Yep. That does, uh, that does kind of bring up a weakness, though, because he doesn't really have a uh, hazard uh, have a hazard remover. So. Well, he has Salamence. You oh, don't yeah, want to yeah, tap yeah. that in the right. bad position, though. Yeah. Because the thing is, if you're going to keep switching <clears throat> the elements into fire moves, it's going to keep taking rocks damage, and then you're. Yeah, yeah it'll be a problem. You're kinda, limiting it yeah we can only hope that johnny gets lucky in his division and that there's uh there's only defoggers and no rapid spinners so that he doesn't have to do it himself and he can just spike stack yeah right. this is unbiased but johnny's good yeah <laughs> yeah johnny's gonna johnny's gonna make fun fact also um about a year ago johnny was the first person i ever met in the pokemon community along with Jarrett. so huh. before you started commentating for the uh for the gba yeah way before wow Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Right. Was I like the yeah, third one? Because I remember the first time I ever met you, I got in a call with both of them, and then I was like, "Oh, hey, Rob, yeah, you sound like, it was, like it was like it was like Jarrett and Johnny, and then you, Eric, and Jose, Joey, and whatnot." Wow. And then our pal Aster. Well, that was way <laughs> after, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot later. <laughs> All right. I haven't been here the whole time. No. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, let's uh, stop talking about. Uh, the past and let's move on to our number nine uh in at number nine i'll talk about this one uh even though i i spent quite some time on johnny actually uh you know this team a little bit better ethan i think i'm gonna let you take it and i'll, I'll grab uh the next one um oh i, I do yeah you do um i think okay. i think you do anyway um right. in at number <laughs> nine we have uh the texas turtwig coached by uh, wait a minute. Who's the coach again? Josh. Josh, that's it. <laughs> Sorry, man. We have uh, Ace Trainer Josh, coach of the Texas Turtwigs, if you just want to go over his team. Yep, he's got Mega Diancie, Dragonite, Cobalion, Hitmontop, Gastrodon, Houndoom, and Venusaur. And um, like with uh, like with the Dragonites, I feel like this this is a really, really good Dragon Steel Fairy. Yeah. Um, Mega Diancie, Dragonite, and Cobalion are all... Uh, um, I... I <laughs> I don't know, I guess they synergize well with each other. I'm not very good at this, but... <laughs> it's okay. You got it, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm triggered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Cabalion in particular is actually one of my favorite... Uh, it's one of my favorite rockers, just because it takes, like, any physical hits, and then it also has Mudsman Bolt Switch. I think it's a lot of fun to use, and it's pretty fast. Um, I think it fits on every team pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll just go down the list. Uh, Mega Diancy is... Uh, Mega Diancy is a really good... Um, really good cleaner. Uh, I think you know you got your you got your moon blast on the special side. You got your diamond storm on the physical side, and um, the things it can't hit it can't hit skills very well, which he has Gastrodon and Houndoom for, mm -hmm. as well as Hitmontop and Cabalion. So <laughs> four of his mons all deal with uh, all deal with steel types pretty well. So I feel like they they match up with Mega Diancie pretty well. Oh yeah, for sure. And then you got a uh, then you got your Dragonite, which. Uh, one thing I noticed with a lot of these teams is that some of them lack kind of like a win con, mm -hmm. and I feel like Dragonite is definitely counts as that because once it sets up and once it sets up, like you're you're losing something usually. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, for sure. Like a, a strong Dragon Dancer. I don't see a lot of them. I know that your team has one, Ethan, um, mm -hmm. specifically, it but. Does. Uh, yeah, that, that is true that uh, Wincon is something that um, a lot of teams greatly lack. I like his first four mons. I like Mega Diancy, Dragonite, yeah, yeah. Cobalion, and Hitmontop. And after that, I feel like he was kind of just rushing to get a, another core. Uh, yeah, a firewater grass yeah, core. I see that. And that's that's what kind of threw me off a little bit was that like I he I, I get Gastron that works. Uh, but then I th I think I would have stopped there and just picked up things that would have synergized a little bit better. Yeah. Houndoom yeah. works well, like you said. Uh, it's a, it's a good steel check uh, because of the fact that it resists steel and it's, it's also a fire type. Flash fire is nice. It's yeah, just it's, very it's, frail. It's a nice ability. He has two immunities uh, among the uh, the firewater grass core being uh, Gastrodon, Storm Drain, and Houndoom Slash Fire, which is kind of cool. But then I, I don't feel like Venusaur fits too well on the team. Uh, and then Houndoom is kind of frail as well, so that uh, that doesn't help. Yeah, the sun team without the sun. I like I like Venusaur's type, but it's yeah, just kind of just kind of like on there pretty it's much. not frail but it's not mega venusaur yeah like, that's yeah. a pretty big difference mm -hmm. so yeah i would have i would have at least picked like vile plume yeah yeah that would have been that would have been cool here. yeah for sure i think that would have fit a little bit better plus he actually I, I take that back venusaur is bulkier than vile plume is it really is it? 
Yeah. Uh, not on the, not on the special right. side. On That's the, true. On the physical side, yes, not on the special side. Uh, but anyway, I mean, like, I think Josh still drafted a phenomenal team. Don't forget, guys, uh, for anybody watching, we are in top 16 of the power rankings. There are 32 people in this tournament. So from the moment we got to number 16, these were already really good teams. There, there is yeah. no team on here that's like terrible. They're all bad equally. It, what Rob said, but <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the next team. And this one I really wanted to cover uh, myself. In at number eight, we have our good friend Rob with the Austin Toros. So let's go over Who's his that? team. Yeah, that's that's you, buddy. Uh, we have oh, Kieran God. Black, Klefki, Azelf, Jellicent, Hitmonchan, Mega Aerodactyl, and Ursaring. So, first off, what I really like about this team is that he drafted Kieran Black first, and then he immediately drafted a huge check to Kieran Black, getting rid of one of the possibilities of having to play against it, which is Klefki. Yeah, that's what I did. That was real sneaky of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what you had in mind, but uh, anyway. I, I suggested it, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. You forgot you were thinking about it. It's all Ethan's fault, but uh, he, he got a great spike stack, or spi a spike stack uh, it benefits Kieran Black greatly. It has a hard time getting Okos on things that it isn't quite effective against, uh, unless it's run Bandit or Specs. So spikes really, really help that. On top of that, he has a Zelf to pair uh, as a Stealth Rocker. Uh, Hitmonchan comes in and spins, opposing hazards away, so that's really, really cool. You can run it uh, with an Assault Vest. You can run it Max Fizz Def if you're worried about it not taking a hit. Uh, Jellicent is a great Scald switch in, which is something that hinders uh, the likes of Azelf and Kieran Black, and especially Mega Aerodactyl, heavily. Uh, so I really like that pick. It's a great water switch in. And then finally, we have Ursaring, which is also something that can come in and get status if it wants to, uh, because of Quick Feet and Guts. Uh, just an amazing wall breaker. I think it's probably his best wall breaker, even better than Kieran Black, because people don't prep for it as much. Mm -hmm. So, I really like the team. He has two stealth rockers. He has a defogger and a rapid spinner. He has uh, just spin blocker. Yeah, spin blocker as well in Jellicent. Just and again, so much diversity. Klefki can do so many different things. Uh, I know after having used it in the uh, in the GPC, uh, Kieran Black is also really diverse because it can be run special or physical for the most part. Uh, Mega Arrow can be run as a purely support set or fully offensive. So a lot of really cool things going on about this team. Rob, do you want to talk about your own team a little bit? Because I know you had trouble placing it so high. Yeah, let's not mention any of the weaknesses, just because I know, like, the people I have to play are <laughs> probably going to watch What this. weaknesses? Because there's a glaring weakness that I just don't want to mention. Nah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, at the end, Aster was like, hey, you have a bit of a ghost problem. So I was like, hey, Ursa Rings, Ursa Rings nice, plus it has guts. So, you know, go ahead and burn me, you know? Yeah, I actually um, I actually suggested a, uh, a Tauros pick, a mascot pick, uh, because Tauros yeah. is a really oh, cool wall breaker nice. as well. I was going to... I was gonna mention that. I was gonna say, why'd you pick Tauros over, or why'd you pick Ursaring over Tauros? Yeah, That's... you wanted that village crusher boy. Um, yeah, Mega Arrows, cool. I got good speed tiers. As of is really nice because it's uh, got a cool move pool, which is nice for tournament. I love how Rob just completely ignored Ethan's question. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you say? I said, why'd you take a uh, why'd you take Ursaring over Tauros? But yeah, I also got hit my. <laughs> what the hell, dude? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, like I said, uh, I don't, it, it was, it was going to be my check to ghost types and most ghost types run Will-O-Wisp. So, you know, I just felt. Oh, yeah, yeah. That makes better, sense. You know, that makes me. actually a lot of sense. I really like that logic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. All right. Yeah, so, yeah. uh, moving on to, uh, number seven, is it? Hold on. Let's, uh, let me yeah. just bring this up. Yeah. Number seven. Uh, I want Dom to take this one, please. If you want to just go over it. All right. So we've got arguably the worst team in the league <laughs> and the worst player. Um, really not a fan of this guy. So oh boy. Yeah, that's where his work. Um, in fact, if you're not watching this, you should just click X right now because, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you don't want to watch this man. Anyway, we've got Heatran, Latios, Roserade, Zorark, Feraligator, Golurk, and Toxic. So I just don't have a Mega, apparently. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have a mega. I took the mega off. Of the mega <laughs> Which audience. this is the top um, sixteen, or is this is the bottom sixteen. Oh, well, this is number thirty-two. Get out he of here! Like honorable mention. <laughs> honorable mention. Thirty-two is right, too so high. high. Oh so, yeah, yeah. Then he has a mega Latias. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead, Dom. 
All right, so he's got Megalodios. Right off the bat, Megalodios is in such a comfortable speed tier, and its move pool is absolutely amazing, as well as its bulk. Like, uh, it's got really good speed F and defense and HP, so it can take hits and can dish out hits. You can run Cal Calm Mind. You can run Dragon Dance, which is pretty cool to use, and it's still got such a massive uh, special attack stat. Even if he does decide to run Dragon Dance, he can run special moves, Strike of Meteor, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, whatever, for coverage on top of that, and it's just an all-around amazing offensive and defensive threat. Heatran, same thing as Audios. Heatran, uh, everyone knows that it's got quad reek to ground, and it's uh, but it just does it so its job so well. Like Heatran can get up rocks very, very reliably, can come in on virtually any special, even if it's weak to it, as long as it's not like strong and stab. Uh, you've got uh, the option to run Scarf, Specs hits hard as crap. Even if it's Scarf, it's actually getting a comfortable speed, and it's not really easy to switch into an offensive Heat Rain at all. Roserade, awesome compared with uh, Heat Rain, you get rocks and you can start hazard stacking, Sleep Powder. Uh, Technician makes its hidden powers hit hard as crap. You can, uh, like I said, hazard, it's like Roserade can even be a special wall. It's got a massive special uh, defense stat. Zorak, Zorak is probably my favorite pick he made just because he's got such a diverse. Uh, Draft with Heat Ram, Megalodios, Roserade. Um, just those three mons by themselves, having to decide, oh, okay, which one of these is Zorark. Either you're wrong and it is Zorark and it blows you back, or you're right and it is it is Zorark, and then you have the other thing to deal with still, and then like oh, you're like, okay, I see you're saying you get to scout with Zorark, you get to punch holes through teams, you get to fool around, play mind games, it's got an amazing move pool, it's fast, Sucker Punch, Knock Off, SD, uh, Nasty Blood, Dark Pulse, Flamethrower, Night Days, like Night Days is broken, like he can just like went off of people missing if he wants to. I'm not saying Aster's that kind of guy, <laughs> but he could do it if he wanted to. Um, for Alligator, for, for Alligator's incredibly potent. If you don't have a Fair Thorn, GG. Like, that's pretty much for Alligator. Life Orb and Sheer Force uh, with its attack stat and its comfortable speed tier. Plus, it's really bulky on the defensive side as well. It can take a lot of defense, uh, offensive hits. Uh, just Waterfall, Crunch, and Ice uh, Punch. Just Those three moves by themselves can literally sweep through teams very easily, um, especially in a league format where you only get six mods, so it's going to be really hard to figure out what you're switching to that is going to be. Uh, Golik, amazing uh Rock setter, you can rock polish with it. It's got no guard dynamic punch, which doesn't have switch ins. Uh, ghost typing makes it so that even if you have a switch into dynamic punch, then you have the option to be blown back by a ghost move. Even though you only have shadow punch and phantom force to deal with, it still it's like the threat is there. Um, as well as having stab earthquake is always nice as well. Uh, Gold is just a really good uh, late game pick, as well as a spin blocker for Roserade and Heat Ran. And Toxic Rope, Toxic Rope blows back any fairy you can set up with it uh, with Sucker Punch. Like, Toxic is kind of frail, that's the only downside to it, but offensively it's an absolutely amazing Pokemon. Poison fighting typing is really, really good, as well as a Scald switch, and so he doesn't have to worry about his uh, Heat Ram taking Scalds or Golurk or Fralgating being burnt, so it's really, really nice. Like, his team's just really well-rounded in general, and even the speed tiers are really comfortable if he wants to run Scarfs on anything. Thank you, Dom, for that. Um, I just want to... Sorry, go... that was really long. No, 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 it's, it's absolutely fine. Um, this is great, actually. I love hearing that. Uh, but uh, I just want to explain my last pick really quickly when it came to Toxicroak. Wait, wait, let me, let me explain it, okay? Let me explain Toxicroak. Okay. Hear me? Oh, Toxicroak plus Zorak. That makes yep. sense. No, that's not also, that's not why I grabbed it, actually. No, no, no. I, I have a better idea, okay? So Toxicroak is going to do a lot of work during this tournament. You know why? Because its biggest weakness is that fire weakness, right? Psychic. That fire. Yeah. People what? aren't going to want to go for fire moves because he has a heat trick. Psychic, bro. Uh, yeah. You, you, yeah. I, its biggest weakness is psychic. <laughs> All right, let me actually explain why I picked Toxicroak, okay? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I have a new theory. Okay. All right. Anticipation. No. So the biggest no? thing... Okay. The biggest thing you can do to a Toxicroak is <clears throat> Willow Wisp it. Okay, no, for real. Um, <laughs> all right, so last round I was gonna get Deancey uh, to complete the fairy dragon steel core. I also wanted uh, potentially another stealth rocker. Why not? Why not have three? You know. Um, but ultimately, uh, Deancey got sniped from me. That's first uh, in round six before it even came back around to me. Uh, and secondly, I noticed a very uh, common theme with my team was that uh, I my opponent could just throw out skulls, and if they burned anything, I was done. Like. If, unless Roserade is Natural Cure, which I would be forced to run if I needed a Skull Switch in, um, then everything was getting burned. And Megalodios getting worn down, 
does not help. Zorark's illusion getting broken for alligator getting burned is like the worst thing possible. Uh, and then Golark and Heatran are weak to it. So I needed an absolute Skald switch in and Dry Skin Toxic Rogue gave that to me, as well as giving me the fighting typing that I was looking for from the very beginning. Uh, unfortunately, I got sniped by the team that is number six on our list. Uh, when it comes to fighting type, I wanted something else because I also wanted a ground switch in. So I wanted a, fi a flying and uh, flying and fighting type, but unfortunately got taken from me before I got a chance to take it uh, on the way back in round six, I believe. So I ended up going with Golurk. Uh, all around, I think my team is is decent, uh, pretty good, solid. I like Heatran plus Megalodius. I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, is going to be very difficult for people to to deal with uh, because they cover each other's weaknesses very well. So. That's pretty much it. Do we want to move on to round six? How about, uh, uh, sorry, pick uh, place number six. Uh, I think we go with uh, with me on this one, right? No, I think it's Rob, right? No, I, I'm, I'm going to take this one, actually, because Dom grabbed and did, uh, did me. But uh, I'm going to talk about Shoddy's uh, team and the, uh, <laughs> and the Bayern Munich. Uh, so let's go over his team really quickly. He has Reuniclus, Zapdos, Diggersby, Mega Sharpedo, Seismitoad, Howlucha, and Mawile. Now, looking at this team real quick, Ethan did mention something to me. We all placed him pretty high, but something about his speed tiers uh, and the fact that his his team is all over the place, like, I'm not, not ragging on his team or anything because it's very, very good. Reuniclus is an amazing Mons, Aptos 2, Diggersby, Crazy Wall Breaker, Mega Sharpedo in a league where you don't have to Mega Evolve on the first turn. Uh, makes it a lot more viable. Seismitoad is a great water switch in because he was very weak to uh, to that, except he did have Reuniclus already. Um, Halucha is also, because of the ability Mold Breaker and Unburden, uh, makes it so versatile. I know because I was looking at it. Uh, and then there's Mawile, which is just an awesome uh, switch into Steel types. Uh, not to Steel types, sorry, to Poison types. Like He's just got uh, like a great synergy overall, I think, on his team. It's just kind of all over the place. And I think you want to elaborate a little bit more on what, what you mean by that ethan um i kind of forget what i <laughs> was saying then but um looking at it again uh i feel like his fastest mod is really his only fast mod is halucha mm -hmm. um because mega sharpedo you can say that's fast but the problem with it with it is that once you mega evolve you lose that speed yeah or you have to stay in and out. let it die mm -hmm. yeah and um so i feel like i feel like he's just gonna rely on halucha to outspeed stuff like every week and or not every week every every match mm -hmm. and i feel like halucha is not really powerful enough for that yeah um so so yeah that's, that's kind of what i had to say about that i mean he, you want to add anything he does have two decent scarfers in zapdos and diggersby um so those those can both be run scarf and are pretty good uh, i doesn't really have to run deep fog yeah for sure. I, I like uh, I like that he picked up Mawile last round, especially because having Seismitoad as your only Stealth Rock setter would have definitely not been a good thing mm -hmm. for him. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, no, but overall, I think uh, I think just having Reuniclus round one, picking that round one was pretty huge because he knew that that was going to go real quick. Um, yeah. Definitely nice pick. I really like that. But yeah, anyway, so let's, uh, do we move on to number five? Yeah. So finally, we, we break. Can I just say something real quick? Yeah, sure, go ahead. If he ran rain for whatever weird reason, mm -hmm. Mega Sharpedo on the rain, Seismitoad on the rain, Thunder Zapdos oh. and Thunder Reuniclus would be absolutely filthy. What does he have to set up rain? Only Zapdos and Seismitoad, right? Halucha gets like every dance. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty oh, sure really? Reuniclus lands it too. Yeah, and so does Halucha. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool actually. He does have that option. Cool. All right, cool thing to mention. All right, let's move on. We are finally breaking through into our top five. And uh, we have two teams from the uh, same city, uh, supposedly, even though one of them is not really from there. Uh, I know because I know him personally. But we'll start off with team number uh, in the fifth place. We have the Toronto Luxray, uh, coached by... Coached by... This is... Hold on, who is this again? I keep forgetting. Hold on. Can you just say you know him? Um, oh, he knows Anthony. Wait, my dude. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Hold on. Toronto Lux Rays are in at number five. Let me just pause it real quick, guys. I'm gonna check who this is. <laughs> All right, we're back. So uh, the uh, Toronto Lux Rays, coached by Turkey, uh, and uh, who said they wanted to go over this one? This was Ethan, right? Me. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. man. Anyway, uh, he's got Mega Metacham, Hydreigon, Skarmory, Jolteon, Swampert, Aromatisse, and Blaziken. <sighs> And uh, Mega Metacham and Hydreigon is a terrifying combo. Disgusting. Um, 
Yeah, it is. That that is really really good uh, offensive core he's got going there. Um, because of course Mega Medicham, uh, its biggest problem is ghost types, and Hydreigon just just eats ghost types pretty much, and um, and psychic types. Yeah, and psychic types. Yeah, it's uh, they're they're pretty good uh pretty good combo, and um, I feel Skarmory and Aromatisse as well is a very good uh very good defensive core. Uh, Aromatisse, um, Aromatisse gets gets some hate, <laughs> for sure, but uh, I think for its I think it's for its value. Uh, it's uh, it's a really nice fairy type because the pure fairy is a great typing, and it takes special hits that Skarmory does not want to take. And um, and yeah, I think. Yeah, Dom, you have uh, you have some experience using Aromatisse. Why don't you tell us how good it is? I say don't sleep on Aromatisse unless you're likely to get six o. Yep. Yeah, Bob <laughs> loves that thing. He like it took him to a championship. Yeah, it's it's really bad in standard singles play like RU. Like it's it's good in RU, but like if you move it up to UU, it's not gonna do anything. Uh, but in league format, for the for the amount of points that you normally have to pay for this, even though this was a free draft, uh, Aromatisse is really really good, and it pairs nicely with the Skarmory and the Hydreigon. Of course, again completing the. Um, uh, the Fairy Dragon Steel Core and putting a Mega Metacham on that team, which wasn't even Turkey's pick. Like he didn't want Mega Metacham right off the bat, um, but uh, Anthony made a pick for him. Zazo. Yeah. As if he didn't have enough wall breakers. He was like, "Ah, uh, you guys don't need to switch into fighting types." Yeah, <laughs> Blaziken. Yeah, Blaziken. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Last pick. That's. Uh, but he needed. A, I think he needed a fire type uh, for sure. I think that's. Uh, that's How did? What? So I would have taken, like, Pyro or something for sure. Well, that would have been really, really good on this team. Uh, like, yeah, really but good. he already has a few special threats. Aromatisse, Jolteon, Hydreigon. I think uh, going the physical route was, was definitely a good idea. For sure. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But, uh, yeah, no, that's uh, it's a really solid team. There's nothing more, more to say about it, really. It's, it's just really good. Yeah, just the top three pretty much wants the game. Yeah. All yeah. right, so moving on, Rob's going to grab our next... Uh, in at number four, we have the Toronto Staraptors, if you want to talk about this team, Rob. Did he just drop? This my... Uh-oh, I'm no, still Johnny here. Hey, Johnny's here. Johnny! <laughs> Johnny. Hey, Johnny. What's up? Yes, Johnny. <laughs> We're in the middle of recording power rankings. I don't know if you want to join us for the top three. We are... Join us. Figured, we already figured, did you. No, I can't. I can't. I'm on my phone. Oh. I'm at a party right now. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, it's nice to see you, man. Thanks for stopping in. Johnny, of course, everybody give a, a round of applause to Johnny for great work. Great work being an admin in the league. He's, he's the one that came up with the league, uh, him and uh, him and Dom, technically, yeah. yeah. And then basically Esther did all the work. Yeah, I just took over. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Esther. Have, have fun at, Johnny. Have fun at your party, man. <laughs> I'll feed it, Yeah. All right, so... Don't do drugs. <laughs> So, uh, Rob, you want to go over the uh, the Toronto Staraptors real quick? Uh, it will, how do you say yes? Of course I do. Oh, God. <laughs> Not this again. <laughs> this is my... That's the worst French accent <laughs> of I, life. I sound just like Anthony. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, he has... <laughs> uh, he has mana feet. Oh, someone... Is that Johnny again? I forgot to mention, uh, go check out the best YouTube channel all of the world of uh, Verlicify. Get YouTube. out of here! <laughs> no, Please. we're not plugging Verlis in my video. <laughs> Guys, he spoils stuff in the thumbnails. <laughs> yeah, he really does. does. Johnny probably Tell me. Is... Check it out. <laughs> all right. Johnny's probably drunk right yeah. now. <laughs> all right, go ahead, Rob. Okay, he has um, Manaphy, Scolipede, Donphan, Cresselia, Chandelure, Mega Gallade, and Electabuzz. And wow, this team is this team is pretty cool. You know. He has Manaphy, which like the best mod in the game, in the draft game that's allowed. Scolipede, so he's going to pass speed into everything. He um he has his wall breaker right there uh, in Chandelure and Manaphy, of course. And he, Mega Gallade, a lot of people don't like it, but you know, it's cool on his team. Nice speed tier. Uh, rounds out his team really nice. Mm -hmm. Is some uh, Volt Switch with Electabuzz, and of course he has Cresselio, which just six O's teams, and it's just a solid team, you know. Yeah, I think he's lacking a little bit on the physical side, but saying that, like he has Mega Gallade and Scallopede, like, do you really need more than that? <laughs> that's that's pretty. That yeah. pretty much covers everything. Donkin has some like one twenty attack, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually Not really that. strong if you like if you go MV's route and you just like run Rock Polish and you can sweep teams. Honestly, it's it's really solid. Yeah. 
But yeah, uh, no, I think his team is uh, is well rounded. I was helping him out with a lot of his picks. Um, he was he was asking me for some advice, uh, and we were we were talking a lot. Like right after, he's he's the one that chose Manaphy on his own, and he chose Scalopede as well. Uh, I think even the top three, just Manaphy, Scalopede, Don Fan, were, was all on him. Uh, and then from that point on, I told him, "Yo, dude, get Cress, get Cress." Like people, people are gonna hate you if you get crest. Yeah, people are kind of just like Cress should not like, standing it. around it. Like, who's gonna get it first? Yeah. Who are we gonna hate? Yeah, exactly. And I think that like his team just looks so solid overall. I think he has a little bit of a ghost weakness, but like, how many people actually have ghosts? Um, I do. You know, like maybe I maybe do. four teams. We all have ghosts. Uh, there are things <laughs> on my team that learn Shadow Ball. I, oh. Yeah, and that's like one. <laughs> that's, that's that's it. Uh, we all know he's gonna speed pass into that Manaphy tail glow and then sweep. Yeah, like that's that's the biggest thing that everybody has to worry about is when that Scalopede actually gets speed pass into something. Like even an Adamant Gallade, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do about that thing? It's just it's there in your face, you know, and it's super fast too. It gets priority as well. I think that's one thing he's lacking a little bit as well is is good priority. He has Ice Shard and Shadow Sneak. That's about it. But uh, Mega Gallade's boof pool is insane. Yeah. If you haven't looked, it really is. It's insane. And it does not care about resistance. It's close combat. I'm pretty sure it plus three Okos, even though defensive cliff able. Yeah. And Will O Wisp is really, really annoying on it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fact that it gets yeah. that is, is kind of crazy because it's so weak on the physical side. It gets sub bulk up, which is a pretty standard set on uh, on regular Gallade. Uh, this one doesn't have any form of recovery, of course, but like just uh, if you can set that up correctly, uh, especially with speed, then you're pretty much just sweeping through a team. So it's a really solid team. I really like it. You guys like it, too. I know that. So, uh,. Senior. Let's move it on to uh, our number three spot. Uh, I think I'm going to let uh, Dom talk about this one, if you want to grab it. I don't think Merck wants me to talk about his team. Really? Why not? Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. That 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 that's <laughs> All right, so destructive we, loss. We, we got <laughs> we got Mega Lafony, Tyranitar, Talonflame, Heracross, Sand Slash, Rotom, No Quillfish. Um, right off the bat, Mega Lafony. Uh, I like to think it's the best, if not top three. Uh, mega mega Pokemon to draft in draft format. Tyranitar is absolutely amazing. Like even though it has a quad weakness and it's got actually a lot of weaknesses, its bulk and its versatility like carry its soul. You can run it banded and like destroy everything. You can run it scarfed, pursuit trap, even mons that aren't resisted to it. It's got a huge special move pool with uh, Dark Pulse, Fire Blast, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and all that kind of stuff. Talonflame, like uh, when I look at most of the teams, the first thing I notice on more than half of them is like. Either they don't have a Talon Flame check or they don't have a Mega Metachim check. Uh, Talon Flame can easily just win teams, and when you pair Mega Lop winning a Talon Flame, like I honestly don't even like if Merc doesn't win, then I don't know what's going on because that's that's absolutely. He's gonna insane. lose to Arc. And then, <laughs> then you got Heracross. Heracross guts, so it can just hit hard as crap right off the bat. It can be scarfed and it hits a really nice speed tier with uh, being base. What is it, 85? Yeah. And uh, having a scarf puts it faster than. Uh, even like Mega Mega Beedrill and uh, Arrow, what is yeah. Mega Sceptile. Yeah, so it's faster than everything after it's got a scarf on it. Um, naturally, uh, Mega Horn, Close Combat, Stone Edge, Knock Off, amazing coverage. Don't really have to do anything better than that. Sand Slash is a really reliable spinner because of its nice defense stat. And he's got Rotom Mo, which is just really good at getting rid of bulky waters. Uh, you can trick things on things. You can Willow Whiffs. It's pretty much just a really good utility mon. Um, it can even be a wall break if you want to run specs. Then Quillfish. Quillfish is really interesting because I think it's something people sleep on a lot in draft format. Um, having Intimidate and the, it's got reasonable bulk as well, but just having Intimidate, being able to come in, get up a spike, leave is really nice. And it's not really that weak. It's highest at that is not base 95. Uh, Waterfall and Poison Jab, I mean, they're not going to be taking lives by any means, but they really do take really nice dents out of things. And just as a utility one, I really, really like it. I just want to say that I suggested Quillfish. He came to me to to see what his last pick would be. I was like, finish your Firewall to Grass Core, dude, and get an Intimidator. That's perfect. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's on me. Um, but yeah, no, you said that uh, Megalopony plus Talonflame, like, that's that's absolutely ridiculous, and I agree. Uh, I, I wanted to draft Deancey specifically for Talonflame. That, I almost did for the that, same that, that was my idea behind it was let, let me force him into running Steel Wing, but I didn't even get a chance to do that. So I really hope I don't take on Merc at any point. I don't want to win my own tournament. Just putting that out there now. Like if I do, that's really cool. But I don't want to win my own All tournament. Right. Um, All right. What, what's up with you? <laughs> I don't. Aster's like 
I don't want to win my whole tournament, but you know, no, my if it happens, it yeah, happens, no, no, you know? no. I'm just saying, like, I I don't want to get that far. And if I if I face Merc, I feel like for... if I face Merc, credit for Merc. Draft. If I face Merc, I feel like uh, I'm I'm going down immediately because this team is ridiculous. Uh, Titar plus Megalopony. Let's just talk about that for a second because he didn't even pick Titar. Shoddy picked Titar for him. <clears throat> and let's just implement seventh gen mechanics and then <laughs> yeah yeah that's it but uh titar titar breaks happened. every single psychic type that lopany can't deal with so yep. that's that right there that synergy is ridiculous and heracross does the same thing if he doesn't want to bring titar mega horn destroys things so and he's got poor man's extra drill as well yeah with sand slash like he and uh, he even said it himself he will spin at all costs so, even if his sand slash has to die, my, my boy Anthony has a mega Gallade and it tears through his team. Yeah, How so? yeah, it does. <laughs> Try to fake out mega Gallade and then you'll learn. That <laughs> <laughs> in your focus. <laughs> All right, so that pretty much covers uh, Merc's team. We are now at our top two, and I will uh, let. Um, you know what? I want to talk about this one. So uh, during the entire drafting process. Um, I mean, Fairy Dragon Steel Cores were something that were heavily sought after. Uh, a lot more so than I think, and I think this was a huge transition that happened um, throughout the entire course of Gen 6, was that people started realizing that Fairy Dragon Steel Cores were a little bit more important than Firewater Grass Cores. And I think Ethan got this down really well. So the Tennessee Tynamos come in at number two. Yep. Uh, I like that. What? Yep, with uh, Jirachi. Shut up, Rob. So Get out of here. <laughs> Shut up, Rob. <laughs> Jirachi, Keldeo, Haxorus, Whimsicott, Mega Pidgeot, Piliswine, which would have worked really well with my team, by the way, and Magneton. So uh, this team is uh, the pinnacle of hacks. Uh, Ethan, if you want to explain your logic behind that. <laughs> okay, so um, I pretty much started off with... Uh, I, I originally wanted to pick Jirachi first. I didn't really have a plan in place at that point. I just knew I wanted to use it. So um, when it fell to me, I got it. And then I was like, okay, what goes good with Jirachi in terms of like weaknesses and stuff? And then I was like, okay, I'll get Keldeo. So I got Keldeo. And then from there, I, and then from there, I just kind of like, um, I, I just kind of planned around that. Yeah. Um, Haxorus, I, Haxorus and Whimsicott were both planned out um, from the beginning because the thing about Haxorus is that it's a very... Uh, it's it's one of the has like one of the like the highest attacks of like any any mon in uh in the format mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure yeah right? 147 like, yeah, yeah. You use it as a wall breaker or a setup sweeper mm -hmm. yeah. like you were saying and before about uh about uh what was it about Josh's team the win con yeah the win con there there's the Haxorus exactly. right there exactly that's why I picked it third I was like okay this I I like Jirachi and Keldeo but they don't really do much uh to set up outside of like calm lines mm -hmm. so I was like you know let's just get something that can come in after everything's worn down by like Jirachi hacks and like Scald Burns from Keldeo and just and just win from there and that's kind of what Haxorus does and then uh, and then Whimsicott uh, is my fairy and it's also got like Prankster and stuff so I can I can keep things from setting up on me and you know you got your Stun Spore and all that all that annoying stuff and then the rest was just kind of was just kind of uh, put on to uh, to make work of weaknesses and and, uh, and all that. Yes. So. No, I think I think that works out very well. I think a Whimsicott uh, has, uh, well, it has access to Leech Seed, which is really nice for Keldeo because you can pivot around and give Keldeo back health, and it's good for Pidgeot as well if rocks are up, so that's that's really nice. Uh, Pil it also set, stops any setup. Yep, yeah, for sure. I think uh, he has uh, two great stealth rock setters in Jirachi and Piliswine. Like, both of those are extremely hard to Oko. Like, you really need, like, a specific Mon to be able to do that. So... Uh, that's really nice. Uh, Trapper in Magneton, which is really going to help out Haxorus, uh, keep it from having to run things like Low Kick and uh, Incinerate, of all things. Um, but yeah, no, I just... It gets that? Yeah, it does. It does get Incinerate. Huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, its special attack is crap, of course. Uh, <laughs> but overall, I think the, the draft looks really nice. I want to talk about his speed tiers. Uh, he does have um, Pidgeot, which hits 375. Uh, it's the same as Tornado's T. We have uh, Keldeo, hits that base 108, so 346. Uh, Jirachi is a base 100. Uh, Whimsicott is actually 116, so it hits right above um, the likes of Starmie. Uh, it hits 364. Yeah, nice speed tier. What? He has some nice speed Yeah, tiers. he has beautiful speed tiers. I just, yeah. I, I love this I team. I usually drop pretty slow. Yep. No, I, I, really, I really love this team. And just the fact that you have a Jirachi uh, plus Whimsicott 
is frustrating to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and a uh, mega pitchy guy. Yeah, for, uh, just, just like everything, everything uh, hacks out your opponent. And I think that's that's like Pokemon uh, in a nutshell, right there. I think you drafted yeah. a Pokemon team right yep. down yeah. to the wire. So yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> this one's low key really good. It team. is. It really is, and the fact that it gives him priority ice shard really helps out his team. I think it's really yep. gonna be nice. Incredibly bulky too. Yep. So that's uh, that's number two, and finally uh, we have number one. Now uh, you know what? I'll do you a favor, Rob. You want to talk about this one? Oh, you want me to talk? About yeah, that? sure. Go ahead. You haven't talked in a while, so. All right, we got my boy Porno Matt <laughs> at number one. I don't know. If that's Entire video name, ruined. But it, <laughs> but it should be. <laughs> I love that. I don't know. Game. I don't know if he's on YouTube or you porn, but he's got a good team. <laughs> He with the three let Leo. I think he's on both, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Go ahead, Rob. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's got Azumarill, Mega Venusaur, Mega oh wait, regular Alakazam, Bisharp, Porygon two, Drudagon, and Electivire. This team is this team's cool, man. Uh, Mega Venusaur is my favorite Mega Mon because it you can't kill it. You just can't, you know. Um, Alexam gives him some speed where he otherwise really just doesn't have that much speed, but it doesn't matter because his team broken that, um, Zoomerill break, wall breaker, Bisharp, it's, it can 6-0 teams and it's just, it's like a 50-50 every time. That's why I can never draft it because I've never gotten a 50-50 right in my life. <laughs> also, I've never hit a move that's less than 100% accurate. Fun fact. It's never happened yet. Yeah. Still have hope, eventually. Porygon 2, you, you just can't kill it. He has so many things you just can't kill, you know? Yeah. Uh, Dragon, Stealth Rocks, Stealth Rocker, mm -hmm. and uh, Solid Dragon type. Yeah. Don't hit it with a physical move or you'll be sorry. And uh, Electivire, very diverse move pool, actually, surprisingly. And uh, Volt Switch, er, to get into his bigger yeah, threats. Yeah, special and physical. So, like, the big thing that... Uh, that I noticed with this draft, the only problem that I have with it, because almost all of us had Matt at number one, except for Rob, who had him at number two. Uh, so we we are convinced that this is by far the best team. Uh, this is kind of like Rob's draft, where he drafted Azumarill, and then he drafted the ultimate check to Azumarill in Mega Venusaur. Like, the only, the literally yeah. the only thing that can take, like, a plus six uh, anything from Azumarill. Oh, they're so annoying together. Yeah, they're they're really, really good. Uh, it's a great core. He didn't complete the Firewater Grass core, but it doesn't even matter. Like, just look at his draft. He has Alakazam, which is a safety net with Focus Sash. Uh, gets great coverage uh, overall. It can be run Life Orb for extra power. Uh, the Magic Guard ability is just so, so good. Uh, doesn't it get inner focus as well? Like, you can literally catch yeah, Megalopony off guard. Like, I don't want to give too much away, but, like, that's... <laughs> if it survives the fake Yeah, out. you Focus Sash it. <laughs> Yeah. Focus session take or focus. It, take it out and it dies immediately. Does it get does it get focus punch? Uh that it does. Oh wait, never it mind. It still that gets hit. Matter. Yeah, it still gets hit. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah. Bisharp. Bisharp is if if Matt knows how to use this thing, honestly, um this this is probably one of the biggest threats in the league, in my opinion. Because yeah. not too much switches into steel plus dark. And the fact that it gets fighting. Like it's it gets low kick. So if he sets up a swords dance, uh, like Rob was saying, it's it's usually a 50-50 with this thing. But if you get it right, you usually just win because you, you, you break so many different walls and your opponent is trying so hard to, to just break it down. Like even life orb variants, like when you're playing in OU, when it comes to Bisharp, a lot of people frown upon this thing in, in uh, league format. But uh, when you pop a life orb on this thing, you're usually just switching around mons. So Bisharp will kill itself to life orb. You can't even do anything because it has Sucker Punch. Either you have to play around the Sucker Punches, or you have to whittle it down with Life Orb, like I just said. So that's that's really that's amazing. A uh, big thing about his team, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but he only has one Stealth Rocker. Um, well, he technically has two because Bisharp does get rocks, but usually he'll only be running rocks on Dredagon. Um, Evire is very nice because uh, it can be run physical or special against Volt Switch. So that's that's really good. Uh, good it complements his team. P two is just so annoying to deal with. So annoying. And he has one of probably the best knockoff switches in the game being Mega Venusaur. It doesn't care about knockoff because it's so damn bulky. So that's really the only way you're breaking P2 is if you uh is if you knock it off. So overall it looks like a really solid team. Anybody else you got you got thoughts on it? 
Um, I just don't want to play it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neither do I. I put him at number one literally for that reason that Ethan just said because yes, he doesn't have hazard removal and like that's a thing. But I was thinking about which team on this list would I least like to play, and it's definitely this one just because he's got such a good balance of really hard to kill, really bulky, and still threatening offensively, and really, really strong, and can still take a hit. Alakazam first taking at the finish later in the game. Dreadigan can glare, which is a really, really unique mm -hmm. and nice thing to have. So ground types like Garchomp and uh, Landers can be Crippled. Uh, paralyzed. And then Electivire just had really good coverage and a pretty nice speed tier as well. Yep. Now overall... Plus he has nothing weak to rocks. That's true, yeah. yeah. He doesn't have a single uh, stealth rock weak, let's say. But yeah, no, that's uh, it's a great team, and I think that uh, that pretty much covers it, guys. I think we're we're done. We're about an hour and ten minutes in, but we finally finished up. Uh, that's kind of how it is when you have four people on one call. But uh, I would just love to thank everybody that's helped me out with this uh, draft You're um, welcome. and this tournament in general. Uh, Rob, you, Thanks, Ethan, guys. great, amazing job. I know you were updating like the sheet. Uh, while I wasn't around and stuff, so that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Dom, uh, thank you so I much. I tried to snipe you a few times. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> I, I tried <laughs> to snipe a couple of people too, but anyway. Um, and uh, Johnny, of course, if you're watching this, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for uh, for coming up with this uh, this sheet and and everything and and the the league idea and the group stages and everything. It's an awesome tournament idea, and I can't wait to see who comes out on top. Uh, again, thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like Porto Matt, am I right? Why do you always have to say something while I'm doing my intro? Like literally every <laughs> single time. It was funny. <laughs> and on top of that, it's okay. Anyway, uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to go check out these guys in the description as well. Rob, Dom, Ethan, and I'll leave a link to Johnny's channel, even though he doesn't upload so much. And uh, yeah, guys, I will catch you guys later. Ciao. Peace. Bye.